very similar to ours, except it's much bigger, right? So it has lots of muscle around it, just like our, our, our eyes do, lots of fat. So when you're cutting around the fat, when you're cutting through that muscle, watch for this little guy right here. Do you know what that is? No. Of course. Oh, sorry. Uh, the nerve. The optic, nerve. optic nerve. It's the optic nerve. Okay. So cut all around, but don't cut the optic nerve. So the first thing we're going to do is make an incision right here, right in the sclera. The sclera is that white, tough material. And it's going to be a lot of uh, liquid will come from it, as you can see, squirting out. Now I'm going to use my scalpel and go all the way around but if you want, after you make the incision, you can use scissors and, and cut the all the way around if you'd like. Yeah, after you... I know. What is that part called again? The sclera. The sclera. The sclera. So you're basically digging the eyebrow out through the sclera? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're going to... I'll show you. <laughs> So what we're doing, there you go. this part is the anterior chamber, okay, all of this, and this would be the posterior chamber. So the first thing that I'm going to have you identify is this little guy right here. This is the cornea, okay. Do you remember in the towards the beginning of the semester we talked about proteins and how they become denatured? Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the cornea in death, or I'm sorry, in life is very clear. Mm -hmm. It has to be right, so right. we can see out of it. Mm -hmm. But in death, those proteins become denatured, and that's why it's so cloudy. Mm -hmm. Okay. But th this is the cornea. So. Now we're going to look at the anterior chamber. And what do you think this guy is? A pearl. A pearl. Well, you know, it's hard as a pearl, <laughs> honestly. It's the lens. Oh, oh, wow. But again, in life, the lens is soft. In death, these proteins become um, denatured and it becomes very, very hard. And you can cut yours open if you'd like, and you can actually see those proteins crystallize. And that's what makes it so hard. So it's really neat. So, that's what you, so, what was, so that, that was lens, so I think I got confused. I thought oh, that sure. was the cornea. No, this is the cornea. The oh, big, the big. Uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is the lens. Mm -hmm. So the lens is in back of the cornea. Exactly, okay. exactly. So now, and of course, all of this is the sclera. That's the, the white part there, the sclera. That's what I cut through, okay, the sclera. Oops, he doesn't want to. I'm going to set him over here for now. So I want you to know that in front of the lens, in the anterior part of the eye, we have what is called aqueous humor. And what it is, it, it's water basically, and it keeps the eye hydrated, and and it's um, very very important, especially for the lens. Is that where tears okay. come from? Um, partially, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be the the it's called aqueous humor. So I want you to know that the aqueous humor is going. We're going to find it in front of the lens. Okay, the aqueous humor. Now this other stuff, which I'm going to scoop out, this is more like a jelly substance. Mm -hmm. See it? This is referred to as vitreous humor, okay? And it is found behind the lens. And that stands the reason, right? Because we wouldn't be able to see through this, <laughs> right? So I want you to know vitreous humor. It is found in the posterior cavity and it's behind the lens. Is that 
Humor or H-U-M-O-R? H-U-M-O-R. Mm -hmm. That could be how old it's been. Yeah. Uh, like how long, do you know how long it's been out I, of the cow? I don't. They don't tell us, so I don't know. And I, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get them anymore. I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything for dissection anymore. Oh, no. I know. This is going to be rare footage. I'm so, so right. I know. I'm so <laughs> disappointed. Is that because of animal rights? Yeah, and this is the posterior chamber. Now this is now this is really oh, no. I don't know. I'm so disappointed. I don't know. I'm hoping the squirrels. We always go with uh, Carolina, but we're looking at different vendors, and maybe we can find something somewhere else. So I want to show you this membrane. I can scoop this out. Do you know what it is? This brown membrane here? It actually will stay together, except for the very end of it. And the very end is attached to something. Do you know what it's attached to? The, nerve. Nerve. the optic nerve. So what do you think it is? Retina? Yes, it's the retina. So now I hope you can see when it becomes detached, well, it affects this optic nerve, which means the person can't what? See. They can't see. Mm -hmm. um, we have surgery now to correct if it's not too severe. But if it's too severe, of course, it, it, they will be blind. Now I have one more thing that I want to show you. And unfortunately, we don't have this, and I don't think it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you see this here? It kind of looks like a, uh, the inside of a shell. Mm -hmm. You see the different colors? It's like yeah. blue and, well, it's called tapetum lucidum. Tapetum lucidum. And it's for night vision. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. So awesome. dogs and cats have this too. Yeah. So when you take a picture of your pet and, and the eyes like glow, yeah. they get, they're red. Mm. Well, they're not possessed, but it, <laughs> it's, oh, they it's, are. it's sure. <laughs> they like it. My yeah. cat is. <laughs> but it's the tapetum lucidum. Oh, that's isn't that neat? Because oh, it they looks all like that. Yeah, I, I know, right? So you have to, and they're all a little bit different. Uh, this is actually kind of pretty though. It has more blue and green, so it's kind of neat. Does that mean, are, are cows colorblind? Uh, no. Are, no. But dogs and cats are, right? Well, mm. they don't see a lot of color, no. Uh-huh. But, but this enables them to see at night, where we can't. <laughs> So I want you to know that's tapetum lucidum. We looked at the retina. We looked at the cornea. We looked at the lens. And we looked at the optic nerve. Okay. So that's our eye. We're going to talk about a glaucoma. A lot of people think that it, it's only um, associated with diabetes, but anyone can have diabetes. Children can have glaucoma. Now it's the brain, okay. So this is uh, the posterior side, this is the anterior side. You don't have to worry about that. Um, what are these called? The right and left hemispheres. Right, the right and left hemispheres, and, and of what? I mean, what is it? It's the cerebrum. Oh, <laughs> She's always mad. Well, well, you, you weren't wrong. wrong. <laughs> you weren't wrong. Okay. This, these are the cerebrum. Okay. This makes up the, the cerebrum. What about this little guy? This is referred to as the little brain. Cerebellum. Uh, Good. The cerebellum. And what is this? Spinal cord. Yeah. Going. It, it would be in the brain stem. So it's brain the brain stem and it going right. Exactly. So when we have an injury here, what does that mean? Paralysis. Or death. Death. death, right? Yeah. Because this is where all of our what? Function. Yeah, the breathing, everything. Okay, very, very good. These little worm like structures in the cerebellum are referred to as vermis. It's with a V. V E R M I S, vermis. And this that separates the two hemispheres is called the longitudinal fissure mm -hmm. longitudinal fissure 
And all of this, you see all these lines, squigglies? It's gyri, which is plural for gyrus. So I want you to try to think of someone when you have Alzheimer's, this gyri becomes real smooth. And wherever you see smooth is where that brain is not firing anymore, it's not functioning. And as the disease progresses, you see more and more of that smooth area. And not only that, but the brain actually shrinks and atrophies. So, and one more thing I want to show you on this side. If we pull down this cerebellum. Looks like a unicorn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby corn. You see the little poofings here? You see those yeah. little guys? There's one here and one here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Corey, I'm like on your shoulder. That, <laughs> all the magnetized in there. They are yeah. referred to as superior colliculi. <laughs> superior colliculi. And I want you to know that they aid in vision. Oh. Okay, they aid in vision. And down here, we have the inferior colliculi. You see they're much smaller? And they assist in hearing, mm -hmm. okay? The inferior here? Uh-huh, and the superior is for vision. So does the optic nerve like connect to that area? Yeah. Well, we're going to see what happens when, when we actually discuss the nervous system. Mm -hmm. But the, what lobe would this be? Occipital. 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 And what is the occipital responsible for? Vision, vision. So we'll talk about that next semester. Okay. Okay. So if we are, we're good with this? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so now we're going to turn it around. And remember I said next semester we're going to be talking about cranial nerves. Mm -hmm. And we have you. Bless you. And we have 12 of them, right? So I'm going to introduce you to two today. The first one is the olfactory nerve the smell it's for smell and the and i do want to mention the nerves have been removed when they prepare these small sections so we really don't get to see the nerves sometimes we'll have a remnant of a nerve um but for the most part they, they've been removed um i'm not mm -hmm. sure honestly i i don't know why but yeah probably i don't know why but you would think right but I want you to know that those um, olfactory nerves come out of these olfactory bulbs. Mm -hmm. So if I have a pin here, I'm looking for olfactory bulb and try to visualize those nerves coming out of the olfactory bulbs. Okay. So that's cranial nerve number one. Now the next item, and it's hard to see on this brain, but if you can visualize this as being an X, okay, um, or some of your brains, I hope it'll be more uh, detailed, but that X is going to be the optic chiasm, the optic chiasm. And from that optic chiasm, what do you think is coming out of that? It's going to be your second cranial nerve, which is the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to go like this and like this. Mm -hmm. It's going to go, one, one nerve is going to go to each eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, doesn't that mean? Mm -hmm. Got my answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's your first two cranial nerves. So the, the one to the right. olfactory and the optic. I'm sorry. The one to the right goes to the left eye? Crosses. They go to the, yeah, crosses. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It sure does. And right here, you see this, it's almost like a different color. You see that little opening there? And you can actually take a pointer and put it inside. Mm -hmm. Now again, oops, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> <laughs> so, Again, unfortunately, this was removed uh, when they prepared it for dissection. But if it was still there, this would be hanging just like this. What do you think it is? It would be hanging just like my pointer is. 
out coming from that infundibulum, that hole. It's a gland. Pituitary. Yes, the pituitary gland, which is otherwise known as the master gland. Okay, so if it was still attached, it would be hanging just like that, which is really cool. So I want you to know if I have a pin in this hole, it's the infundibulum. Okay, and that's where the pituitary gland is going to attach. Okay, so let's look at this. This is the brain stem. What do you think this is? It starts with an end. Yes, the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata. And what do you think this would be? It starts with a P. The pons. The pons, very good. If you get, I know people get nervous on the test. And I may have this you know, hanging out like this. If you get confused as to which one comes first, just remember M comes before P. So this is going to be the medulla oblongata and this is going to be the pons. Okay, so you won't forget it. Okay, you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's turn it over. And when you make your dissection, I already uh, cut into this, the brain is so easy to dissect. You put your scalpel in the longitudinal fissure and very gently you start <coughs> cutting. And you cut right in the middle of the cerebellum and the brain stem, and you go all the way down. And when you're cutting through this, you can actually take your fingers at, at some point and just spread it open, just like this. Wow. Okay. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> again, we haven't talked about the nervous system yet, oh, yeah. but you've heard of meninges. You've heard of meningitis, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have three meninges. We have the um, dura matter, which I saw with some of yours. I've, I saw the remnants of the dura matter. The dura matter will encase the entire brain, and it it's literally means tough mother. And it's because it's, it's so tough, it protects the brain. That's the first one, the dura matter. And when you're cutting through the brain, you're going to be cutting through another layer, the second layer called arach um, arachnoid matter. And they call it arachnoid matter because it's spider web, yeah, it's spider web like. And, and then the innermost, which you probably will be able to see is the fear matter, okay. Okay, so let's see what we have here. <coughs> see, I left some of this attached. Okay. So the first structure I want you to be able to identify, it's almost like a rubber band structure. It's right here, and we have one on this side too. Mm -hmm. And it's called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum. With the corpus callosum, this is what we use when people have severe seizures and we have done everything we know how to do and, and nothing works, we will actually cut <coughs> this corpus callosum mm -hmm. and it will stop the seizures for the most part. Um, but one of the side effects is because there's no communication between the two sides of the brain anymore, so if you say to the person, what is this? Well, they're looking at it, mm -hmm. but they can't verbalize what it is. But even though they can talk to you fine, they could talk to you about anything, but when you ask a specific question, like what is that, they can't tell you, but they know what it is. Okay. It's really crazy, right? Uh, that's a big side effect. That's why we don't like to do it unless we absolutely have to. But that's the corpus callosum. So if you go in and you start, it won't mess up any other part of the brain when you go in and start doing that? Well, sometimes it will. You know, everybody has different side effects. Right. Sometimes they experience an aura. You, if any of you have migraines and, and you experience that aura, well, they have it all the time after we do this. So, yeah. you know, it's like, which, which is worse, yeah. the seizures or the, yeah. 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 So, okay, so this is the corpus callosum. This one right here, and we see it over here too. Okay, because remember this, I, I cut it right in half. 
This is the thalamus, the thalamus. We're gonna talk about the thalamus when we talk about the endocrine system, but for right now, and I'm not going to test you on it, I just wanna uh, kind of plant this in your brains. This is the relay station for the cranial nerves. Okay, they all report to the thalamus except for one, but we'll talk about that uh, next time, next semester. Okay, but this is the thalamus. So if I have a pin here, what are you gonna tell me? Thalamus. 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 I'm not going to pin this, but I want you to know that the hypothalamus, and it's real hard to see on this guy, but it's going to be right below the thalamus, but I won't pin it, okay? Because it's just too hard to see on the sheet brain. But I want to mention it because the hypothalamus is very important. You already know one function, right? It's our thermostat. Well, it has a lot more functions, and uh, so I just wanted to mention it. But you won't be responsible for identifying it. What do you think this little guy is? This is a really nice one. Starts with a P. No, but you're so close. It's the penile gland. And the penile gland is responsible for secreting the Dracula hormone. Do you know what that is? It only comes out at night. <laughs> That's why we call it the Dracula hormone. It's called, yes, it's called melatonin. Oh. Melatonin, okay. So that, yeah. that is what I was gonna yeah. say. Is that, is, is that not functioning? Is that why people have trouble? Absolutely. And let's pretend that you guys have already graduated and you're nurses and you're all on night shifts. Well, it's gonna take you a while to sleep during the day because the brain, this pituitary gland, won't produce that melatonin. Now, after a while, when your body gets used to it, it will start producing the melatonin at, at, during the day. But then guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna change your shift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's medicine, right? I do know, I stay up all night yeah. yeah, so, but that's, that's it. Uh, what else do I wanna show you? What is this part of? This is just the other side of the little brain, the cerebellum. You see all of this? Mm -hmm. Well, this is called arbor vitae. Mm -hmm. And you know what it means? It's like a tree. Tree, tree of tree. life. Oh. Tree of oh. life. That's arbor vitae. And this is all white matter. And everything in the background is the um, uh, gray matter, okay? So this is all gray matter, and the tree is going to be the white matter. And again, we're gonna talk about this next semester when we talk about migraines and how migraines affect both the white and the gray, but it affects one more and the other, and we'll talk about why. You can actually see it on a CT scan when someone suffers from chronic... Um, they have more white matter, right? They, the white matter is affected mm -hmm. more, yeah. And what happens is, um, it looks identical to what we see in MS, but, oh. but it's not, they don't have MS, they have the migraine, the chronic migraine. So there's a few, couple more things I wanna show you. Oh, actually, this is the cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct, right in there. So if I have a pin here, I'm looking for the cerebral aqueduct. And there's a, It'll make sense in a minute. There's something I want you to know about that cerebral aqueduct. But I want to come back up here to this corpus callosum. Inside the corpus callosum, and some of these brains are very, um, it, it's kind of hard to see. But if you open up that corpus callosum, there should be a darker pigmentation in there and that's referred to the choroid plexus, the choroid plexus. And in that choroid plexus, we have what is called epidermal cells, okay? And those epidermal cells will produce cerebral spinal fluid. So what I want you to know is if I have a pin deep inside, you okay? You feel dizzy? You feel dizzy? It happens for me sometimes. Do you have some water? Do you guys have some water? Yeah, just a